I'm now uh, excited to introduce Captain Brandon Thetford from uh, Louisville EMS and Fire. He's a program administrator. Uh, said chief pilot in there too, but he maybe doesn't go by that all the time. But definitely helped get things set up, and uh, we'll talk about what he's doing up there. So, Brandon, here you go. All right, thanks. Can you hear me? Uh, first of all, it's my first time here at this conference, so I just want to say thanks to Grand Defense and to the Red League Peak. This is awesome. Hopefully next year, some more of my guys in the PD will come up here with us. But uh, I'm from Louisville Fire Department, Louisville, Texas. We're north DFW Metroplex, north of Dallas, about 20 miles up by 35. Um, just a little background on our city. We, we have eight firehouses. Uh, our drone program is split between fire and police. We got about 120,000 people, I think, that we cover now, so we're not like a big Austin, big Dallas, kind of a mid-sized city. We uh, started our program in 2019. Um, now we have 12 pilots. There's three of us in the fire department, and the rest are in PD. Uh, this Later this year, we're gonna be adding additional pilots through our uh, co-care program we're starting, which is a mental health unit. It's gonna have a paramedic and a police officer that are together for a 24-hour shift. And our paramedics on those units are gonna have a second drone and also be pilots. So at any time during a 24-hour period, we'll have three drones basically available on the street to be used. <laughs> uh, we all went the part 107 and COA route, and that was one of the that was one of the ways that we kind of sold this to our city. They wanted to make sure that we were doing everything as legally, you know, as professionally and legally uh, legally as possible. That's how you say that. But uh, we got co-hosts through the FAA and then we've all been through the Part 107 class and any of our pilots that come on board will have to be Part 107 before they can fly and operate. Uh, just recently we updated our COA and we just got the blanket Class G COA as well, so we can operate anywhere outside of our city in Class G airspace on mutual aid, and we have the tactical beyond visual line of sight. Uh, right now we're using two DJI dual enterprises. Uh, so the way it works with our three pods now and the PD, the PD has a dedicated drone unit in the squad car. So they're on the street with a drone at any time during the day, and then my position, which is the EMS captain, we're the three pilots per 24-hour shift, and we have the drone in our vehicle. And then just recently, we just got uh, two Mavic Minis to do interior operations, and I know the PD used that uh, just a, about a week ago to some good success on getting some burglars out of a building without having to send an officer in there, so that worked out really good. Uh, since we started our program, we've been using drone sets. We tried a couple of other things uh, ahead of time. I think Kitty Hawk, and uh, we tried looking at some streaming boxes, and none of that just really did exactly what we wanted it to do. So we've been with drone sets. They're on their is it version two, basically what it's called now. Or so we started we started with version one. Now it's drone sets 2020. Um, the platform has grown and it's a whole lot faster now. Some of the problems that we had a couple of years ago have completely gone away with video feeds cutting out. We don't have that anymore. I heard some people talking about that the last couple of days. So yeah, it doesn't happen for us. It, that video is all, always there. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you've been through their presentation, basically you know what it was, but the, the big thing for us is, you know, to have that streaming video into your command post into your battalion chiefs, into the chief's desk at the back at, at admin, they can log in at any time and see what is going on on that drone. And it helps their decision making. So yeah, there's uh, some, some pictures just of some things that we've done. Uh, again, everybody sees the same picture. So what the pilot is seeing is, is what your admin, what your command is seeing. And we found out early on that without, without that, if you're just standing there with a screen and you're trying to communicate over the radio or sit there and throw the remote in and out of a car window, it doesn't work very well. It works, it works great to have that picture on everybody's device. Uh, tracking flight hours, training and reports. So if you operate under a COA, you have to do monthly reporting, you have to keep your flight records. 
you have to have all your training records on your pilots. And I personally like to have everything in one spot. We started out before we had this with like 50 different Google Forms, which is great if that's all you have, but it all ends up in different places and it's hard to organize. So this was just an awesome thing to have those kind of features in there. So on fire responses, um, our BC and anybody in the command post, we all have mobile computers, iPads, they can pull, pull that up anytime. Um, better situational awareness, I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, some particular cases we had, and this was, in particular, it was kind of nice because this was one of the chiefs that after we started our program, he really kind of thought it was just a bunch of toys flying around and didn't really care about it. He ended up in command of one of our big uh, commercial four alarm fires we had, and we put that drone in the air and he immediately realized the ladder truck in the rear is in the wrong place and it's not hitting anything with this water stream. Well, the guys on the ground couldn't see that and the guys in the bucket couldn't see that, but the drone could see that. So at that point, he was a believer and he was watching it all on the iPad in the truck through drone sense. So uh, same thing with brush fires. Uh, we've had a few large brush fires that, you know, we're calling in mutual aid brush trucks from eight different cities and thinking we're going to be out here for eight hours and you put the drone up and you go, oh, you know, it's, it's pretty small, but from the ground it looks like the whole world's on fire. So the drone, IC makes a decision, let's send a few trucks over this way, cut it off and we're done. We can send everybody else home. But we wouldn't have gotten that view otherwise. Uh, so special events, so we have, every year we have Western Days, which is a big event. We have two, no, three concert stages set up, food. I think there's at least 20,000 people in there over the weekend. It's all confined in our main downtown Main Street area, so it's hard to move resources around. So this, this was one of the big ones that got our city more on board with our program because they could be in the EOC downstairs in City Hall with a big screen pulled up, drone sense on there, and they could see everything that the drone's seeing. So kind of the same thing that Austin PD just talked about. We had a lot of fights during that, medical emergencies, um, and we, did, we as pilots didn't have to do anything but fly over those locations, and in the EOC they could direct all the resources in without having to worry about taking people through the middle of a crowd. You know, it, it, it worked out really well, and, and the city management at that point was like just, awestruck that this ability that we now had that we never had before. Um, the protests, I mean everybody, I think everybody that has at least a small city area had some kind of protest it seemed like the last summer. Um, same thing, we had everybody in the EOC hooked up, had drone sense running, they could see everything that was going on. Um, we had at one point a local business owner that got on a roof with a uh, rifle at the beginning of one of the protests thinking that he was going to have to protect his business and the drone assisted in locating him and having police over, go over and talk to him. So. Uh, dive rescue is one of the big things we do. If, if, if you've heard of Louisville, you may have heard of, of it because of our lake because it seems like we drown like nine to ten people there every summer. It's a big party lake. Um, very big lake when our dive team goes out over the water, if it's not right next to shore, the incident commander really has no idea, no clue what's going on. So that helped with our BCs. They're in command of those incidents. You send the drone out, you can look at lake traffic. You're uh, you know, hovering overhead, just, just giving them that situational awareness on the lake of what's going on that we've never had before either. So. Uh, this is a good one. So public transparency is a big thing. It's a big important thing with our city um, with the privacy laws and things like that of getting citizen complaints about your officers or your fire departments flying a drone. They're looking at my backyard, looking at my apartment or whatever. Uh, one of the features DroneSense has on the map and after the flight shows your flight path. You can export that into Google Earth and it will actually show an animation of your flight and it will show where your camera was pointed. So we've actually used that in some of the uh, older versions. The, the new version I think still has it. 
we haven't used it recently, but we had to use it for a citizen complaint one time to show where the camera was looking and they could show that citizen that their complaint basically was invalid. The drone was never looking at their house. This is what we were doing. This is where the camera was pointed. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do that without the software either. So is that? That's the last slide. That's the last slide for me.